Hello everybody, as I promised, here's the third video on communication protocol. I chose USART so we can communicate our STM32 board with our computer easily over a USB to serial converter. To start, we need to check which pins we want to connect. For my convenience point, I want to use B6 and B7 for the USART 1. So now when you know the numbers, the first step is the same as before. We need to initialize our GPIO. For that, we need to initialize our clocks for this GPIO. So we search for GPIO B. And here's the function. This function configures the GPIO B. We can just copy this argument over here. And the new state is enable. Then we need to configure our GPIO for proper operation. We can go down and now first we need to create a pointer of type GPIO need type def. And to easily configure, we can just use all this configuration that is available already here. For the pins, we will use pins 6 and 7 as stated before, but if you have uh, some other board, you will need to change this one. For the mode, we go into gpio.h and here we can see that we want to use an alternating function mode for our communication protocol. So we want to plug in AF, we'll bump the frequency out to 50 MHz just for the sake of it and we can leave others default. To initialize it, we need the function GPIO init. The first one is GPIO B. The second one is at and GPIO struct. And we have initiated GPIO. Also, we need to put in here zeros because GPIO in its struct is a structure not a pointer but here we need to use it as a pointer and I forgot okay so we have configured the GPIO now we need to connect the GPIO pins to the alternating function mode so we have we head over here and go to uh, AF okay here we can see the function that connects a pin to an alternating function and we need to use two of those for each pin. So the first parameter is GPIO B in our case. The second parameter is GPIO pin source and you just add the number of the pin right after it. And the second is and the third argument is the function that we want to use. Here is the list of all the functions. We want to use usart1 in our case. You can use any other usart depending on which pin you want to use. So we can just copy this again and just change the pin to 7. It doesn't matter. It knows which pin is which inside the peripheral. Speaking of peripheral, now we need to initialize the usart peripheral. So for that we head over to the C file and it's exactly the same as for GPIO. We firstly need to connect the clock, but it's not this one, it's another one. We search USART1 and we see it's the high speed APB2 peripheral. Note that APB2 connects to USART1 and USART6 and higher up is the peripheral APB1 that connects to all the other from 2 to 5. So you need to make sure you connect the right one. So initialize this function. Oh, I didn't copy it. So we copy this function. The new function state will be enable. And peripheral will be usart1. So we just copy usart1. And after we enable the clock, we need to configure our usart. We go down. First, we, we need to initialize our new structure of this type. So it's going to be usart in its struct. And for its default values, we're going to just copy this. 
this really shows how handy are the library files because everything is inside you don't need to look at data sheet at all unless you need a better explanation here we can leave everything stock we can in this tutorial we're just gonna send data and not receive so we can delete the rx and just send tx uh, everything can be left to default now we just need to initialize it so we can use the function usart init and the first argument is the usart we want to use usart1 and the pointer to our structure and like before replace arrows with dots now we need to enable this peripheral so this peripheral is like a separate module inside the microcontroller and we need to start it so the module starts working it's like a separate computer you could think of it's not but you can think of it like that so we scroll down to usart command this enables and disables the uart peripheral so we type in usart1 and the new functional state is enabled Great, now we have enabled and configured and enabled usart. Now we're ready to send something. So firstly, we're going to send uh, a letter or any number. Anything you said will be interpreted on the other side as a character. And character, as you may know, are represented in the ASCII table by numbers. So if we put in a certain decimal number, the, there will be a corresponding character. So if we want to send the letter K, we need to enter... A 75 so let's do this for sending we go into here and go down to data transfer functions and we have the usart send data function the way this works is the send and receive use the same data ready uh, register in which the uh, we firstly copy our data and the usart uh, command or user peripheral will take the data in this register and push it out. So we firstly declare the user we want to use and then the data. K was 75, if I'm not mistaken. K is 75. So we want to 75. And we just, you don't want to just flow it with data. Uh, and therefore we want a simple delay. And I'm going to copy our delay function for approximately one second from our previous video it's this one so we divide the well we can replace it with system core clock uh, so we're gonna send data to the register which is gonna uh, which is gonna send the data over to UART and then we wait one second to make sure that the transmit register is empty so it's ready to receive another ship you can say so we can check it with a flag so we can scroll down to a function called usart get flag status all along this microcontroller there's a lot of variables you could say they're called flags and when a, something happens a certain flag or multiple flags can be set different values so if the data register in our case which is this flag txe which says that the transmit data register is empty. So when this flag is high, it means that the register for sending data is empty and can hold another data for next. So this way we don't corrupt previous and next uh, data that we want to send. So if the data is multiple bits, we can wait until the data is sent and then we can say new data. First parameter is usart1 and then flag. So this returns one when the register is empty therefore we want to, to uh, put it in a while and negate it so when it's empty and it's one the while loop argument goes to zero and it goes out of the while loop and starts data and if this is uh, zero so the register is empty it, actually it's not empty it's gonna negate it it's gonna be one so it's gonna stay in the while loop now we can save this go to our compiler settings and run make 
affirmative, make burn to upload it to our code. And I'm just going to use Arduino because it's simple. I can clear the output from testing and here you can see every second a K appears. So it's just putting K, K, K one after another. For convenience, I'm gonna show you another code. I'm just gonna copy it so it's easier. And we're gonna include this function at the beginning so it will be globally accessible. This function called user send text will accept as an argument a pointer to a character array or to a string, which is the same. And we're gonna check if the corresponding asterisk means the value at the s, s is the value of the pointer. So we're pointing at the location where the string, uh, character array starts. And uh, we know that uh, character array is uh, looks like this. So we have characters and in the end we have a zero. This is called the zero termination. And this way we know when the, uh, the character array ends or when the string ends. So until we go to that, this will be uh, one. But when we come to the zero, this will be zero. So uh, here we check this and when we come to zero, we'll stop the while loop. We get inside and then we check if the uh, transmitting register is empty as well as be we did before. And then we send the corresponding S. And then we increment the pointer by one. So we move to the next one and the next one and the next one until we reach zero. And then this while is going to get zero and it's going to go out. So we can use this function now to send text after the letter K, but we can just comment this out for now. And we can just do double quotes and we can write testing. You can also add a numerator uh, backslash N. This will make uh, uh, actually a four slash N. This will make the new line command. So the terminal, we know that it has to go into a new line. So it will write testing and a new line testing and a new line testing. We test this, we upload it. You can also run make burn. Oh, I have my prototype here. Okay. This is gonna go. If you go to our terminal, you can see that every second, roughly, it pastes a testing word inside uh, each own line. So it's not just testing, testing, testing next to each other. So this is a quite a simple function for writing strings. Uh, here's another function for writing numbers, because if we send a number, it's gonna interpret it as a character according to the ASCII table. So sending a number, we have to firstly convert the number into an ASCII send a proper character and then it's going to be interpreted as the appropriate number. So uh, so again, we have to dissect our number. If we put the function here, our number is like this and we have to send each letter, uh, each number as a separate character as this would be a string. So one has to be sent as a character two, three, four. And if you look at the table, one, which is here, one is actually 49 in ASCII. So we have to uh, firstly convert each, uh, each one into the proper ASCII. To do that, this is the function that I have. I'm just gonna copy it. I'm gonna go roughly through it, but you can look at it at home. This code firstly expects any usart, but we can hard code it to our usart, which in our case is usart1, which is right here. And it basically divides the value that we put inside the x. Uh, this is modal uh, dividing, so it's going to divide by 10 and then it's going to spit out the remainder and it's going to uh, transform it into an ASCII character. And then this and then it's gonna divide it by 10. It's gonna go over and over and over and over and over again until x reaches zero. And 
there's an i which starts at zero and it's gonna send the values uh, which are stored inside this uh, array because we have a maximum and we're just gonna send each number as a separate character so this is gonna assemble at the output the number as a whole number so we, you can see a whole number but it's actually a string of characters so i can just copy this function right here maybe before sending the text and we want to send the number of 500 save it and compile it oh we just forgot to disclose send number usart is the right one uh, what is the problem send number undeclared first in use in uh, 29 oh yes here one so it's gonna use the send data command to send data over so we compile now it works and as you can see it writes 500 and right after it testing and new line after testing so this is working as expected this video is already very long but i hopefully gave a good enough explanation of everything after editing the video i saw that i forgot to mention that we didn't include the receiving part of the uart so if you type something into the terminal so you can see it in the microcontroller i thought this was necessary for purposes of putting the usart to use as a means to see what is happening inside the microcontroller at the time therefore i will do it in the next video because this one is long already so uh, make sure to tune in the next video um, so thank you for watching and uh, i'll see you next time